Within just a few minutes of riding, the Bosch CX equipped 29 inch Trek rail gives the immediate impression of EMTB dominance. Shifting on the 9.9 .9 build is so crispy with SRAM's electronic eagle access, and the ease and precision of RockShox's reverb access dropper post is top notch. For once, we felt like Leonardo DiCaprio's character on the Titanic. Too poor to buy this experience, but lucky to be enjoying it. The bike uses a Trek exclusive reactive shock technology inside of a RockShox Deluxe rear shock. That's paired with their ABP rear pivot, and you'll find geometry adjustment chips nestled into the upper seat stays. The 250 watt Bosch CX motor has a wide range of power settings that you can access through the informative top tube display, plus it has super snappy acceleration and consistent torque through your cadence range. Extra effort on this bike is rewarded more than any other since the motor just keeps on pulling, giving you that little bit of extra consistent torque that makes it amazing in scenarios where you're just pushing things to the max. When you have the traction for it, the motor helps claw its way up climbs in a way that the competitors can't. <laughs> On the steepest bits of trail, you can actually be fighting the edge of traction because of just how much the motor puts out. At times it walks a fine line between being too much and just perfect, but we'd definitely rather have it on tap than be left needing more. When it finally does sign off at 20 miles an hour, you can definitely feel it on the uphills and moderate descents and you're going to have to keep on those pedals to keep this one moving. A recent Bosch software update after the filming of this video provides additional motor control features increased torque from 75 to 85 newton meters, and an even more natural, intuitive feeling EMTB mode, making it extra appealing. The rail also won the Energizer Bunny Award for the best battery longevity in our test fleet. That's why it weighs so much. <laughs> <laughs> After the Heckler and the Levo SL were dead and the Sight VLT was left on life support, the rail's removable 625 watt hour battery consistently had miles left in the tank. Weighing in at 48.9 pounds, the perceived weight while descending was like a race-ready downhill sled, providing loads of comfort and stability. Well-balanced geometry helps it corner well, and the bike handled high-speed, rough descents like you'd expect from your favorite Trek, Enduro, or downhill bike. One standout was how well you could get the front wheel up to manual moto whoops. Yeehaw! On the weakness front, there aren't many downsides. However, even when we had it in the low bottom bracket height setting, it felt like we were riding on top of the bike as opposed to the more desirable in the bike feel. This characteristic was most noticeable in consecutive tight corners where it could get stood up in nearly every apex. Yeah, definitely finding I'm like, you got a break earlier on these, especially the trek here. A little bit of break earlier than you think leads to just more stability and better exit speed. I've been overcooking way too many turns on this lap. Oh, so yeah, see, I should have braked a little earlier. Had the brake in the apex of that corner and botched it. I'm finding like braking early and really trying to just definitely stay off the front brake when you're in the apex. These things stand up so easy if you're, if you're braking while cornering. Like more so than a regular bike. There was also a slight stink bug effect under heavy braking with room for improvement on small bump sensitivity and heavy compressions compared to the others in the test. It's possible that Trek has gone a bit too firm on the rebound tune as all three of our testers had it maxed out and occasionally we felt like it was just a bit too slow in packing up. The super rounded profile of the Bontrager SE5 tires definitely leads to decreased confidence when you're hitting corners, sometimes letting things get all kinds of two wheel drifty but acceleration and braking traction was still really good. All we'd want is a bit more side bite out of the tires. The handlebar remote is also a bit large and it can be difficult to manage while you're riding. Some added simplicity here would be a good thing. Ultimately, the Trek rail does everything pretty well, making it one of the best all-rounders in the test. With the sending characteristics you'd expect from your favorite Trek mountain bike, the rail is easy to ride and even easier to climb thanks to its snappy torque and steady pull. Brad Howell, what's your favorite bike of the bunch? Ah, come here. My favorite was the Trek Rail. This thing is absolutely well-rounded. I love the motor. The Bosch motor, it blows everything else away. Consistent power, still going strong with the battery. This thing loves the corners, and it took me a little while, but I feel confident I can make this thing dance when I need to. If budget is of no concern, the 9.9 .9 build is near the top of the pecking order in the EMTB landscape. It's not as playful as charismatic as some of the others, 
with this tuxedo looking bike symbolizes class and intention with a big win on battery life. Be sure to head to vitalmtb.com for a full spec comparison, suspension analysis on all the bikes, and relative performance ratings. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the trails. That was it! <laughs> 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 <laughs>